Hello guys, welcome to this video. Uh, this is The Real Dragons. Of course, I've been on topic on every other video. So today, I think I get it on topic. So, today I'm going to be talking about one of the most dreaded things. Well, not really dreaded, but it's very common in young bearded dragons and bearded dragons of all kinds, ages and sizes. So, if you haven't guessed by now, by the title, it's Tail Rot. Now, it sounds a lot more scary than it really is. Tail rot is a infection from a trauma in the bearded dragon's tail. So pretty much what happens is when the bearded dragon's little or in a cage with other bearded dragons, another bearded dragon might bite the end of the other bearded dragon's tail and possibly cause an infection to occur because bacteria gets inside of the wound. So it's quite simple how to treat it. Um, so. If you can't see back here, my bearded dragon pickles, he's currently suffering from tail rot. I've been treating it and it's actually progressively helping him. So what I use is a betadine water mix. So when you mix it, you want it to make look, you want to make it look like a light tea. So when you're doing this, you soak the bearded dragon's tail about an inch above the area where it appears to be necro- uh, rotted and um, you soak it for five minutes and after that you take it out you put non pain relieving now this is very important non pain relieving neosporin on it and then you do this for about it takes the infection about 21 days to get out of your system because you have to continuously treat it I recommend soaking your tail for five minutes three times a day three to four times a day and if you don't see any improvement do not wait to call the vet because it could mean that it's serious and it needs amputation. Now, if you if it's halfway more than halfway up the tail, then you're in trouble. Go ahead and just go to the vet, schedule an appointment, do what you have to do. Because this is for slight cases, like if you catch it early, you just want to be careful because you don't want to put your beardy in danger. So right here is my bearded dragon, Mr. Pickles. Say hi Mr. Pickles. Uh, as you can see, he's a pretty young dragon. He's like maybe two months old. I got him from Petco. I know pet store is not the best place for buying reptiles or exotic pets. But um, I didn't want to wait. I know that sounds really selfish, but yeah. So as you can see, on the end of his tail, it's a he has a bit of tail necrosis. That is probably going to fall off as I treat it. But other than that. He's pretty healthy. Uh, it does not seem that he has any bad things with the stomach. He eats a lot, like, I'm not kidding guys. When I say he eats a lot, like, think 50 crickets a day almost. So, I'm eventually gonna start him on doobie roaches. And that'll be a video for another time, but, so let's get back to this topic, tail rot. When you find it, if it's past, here, let me show you. Okay, Mr. Pickles. If it's past here, get a vet, like, because this is really bad because it can get into their spine. And if it gets to their spine, it can rot their organs out. Excuse, excuse me. Um, so, Mr. Pickles here, he's, he's had it since we got him. It took me about a week to notice, and when I did, I had to identify it. So, if you're new to owning a bearded dragon, I definitely do not recommend going in blind. They are not a beginner's pet. I know what people say, they are not a beginner's pet. The reason why, and also, whoever told you that you do not need to take them to the vet, oh my gosh, I didn't, originally, I did not think I was ever gonna have to take any exotic pet to the vet. But how wrong I was, oh my gosh. Uh, you have no idea how much could be wrong with your little beauty. So, next topic, um, don't freak out about tail rot. Because it is very common. It's almost as common as egg bound in females. Uh, Mr. Pickles is a male, by the way. And um, the way that you can tell is you lift up their tail, and if you see two bumps, it's not that easy to tell on the camera, but he has two bumps one here, one here. I know, Mr. Pickles, you don't like this. But um, if, you have, if he has two bumps, it's a he. If it doesn't have any bumps, it's most likely a female. It's hard to tell when they're little, but I know for sure that this is a male. So, yeah. 
Mr. Brick, Mr. Pickles is back in his uh, tank. He just wants to bask right now. So, what I found with my Brooder Dragon is that I actually had this thing back here on that side, and he would get so close to my light, and my light gets really hot because I have a mercury vapor. Um, and his tail was actually trying to, he was not even realizing, but he was burning his own tail. So that was another problem. I had to switch around the hides, but uh, it's actually improving a lot. Uh, the vet did tell me that Neosporin is not the best, but I stopped using the Neosporin and it actually got a lot worse. So now I'm using the Neosporin again. Uh, again, if you, uh, if you're really new at this, uh, trust your vet. Your vet is probably a hundred times more experienced than you are. I could actually possibly be wrong, but it's working for Mr. Pickles back here, so I'm going to keep doing that. Also, every time you handle your breeder dragon, wash your hands. Trust me. Zoantic diseases are very common. Uh, they can actually kill you some adult. What are you doing? What are you doing, Mr. Pickles? What? You hear that outside? I know. Anyway, um... So, sorry, I had to go uh, grab these. So, what I have is 10%. I know it's hard to tell because it's the mirror thing, but it's 10% Provodine Provodonoladine solution. First day, and antiseptic. It helps kill germs and prevent infection from minor burns, cuts, and scrapes. The reason I got with this instead of the actual brand Betadine is because this is actually a slightly stronger solution. Now, um, because this has 10% and the other is 5%. So, if you have an open cut on the dragon, do not use this. Oh, wait. I'll cut that. For external use only. Okay. Yeah. And uh, here's my newest form that we got. It's the original non-pain relieving Neosporin. Very important non-pain relieving because the not pain relieving has a certain chemical that they cannot have. Uh, which one is that? Want to get back out? So, um, yeah, I think if you found this video helpful, I will be posting again another video. Uh, my next one will probably be about beginner's tips and tricks that you need to know about bearded dragons. They can actually be very picky on what they eat, so, yeah. See you guys later.